Well, all right. Looks like we're gonna jump into this game. I'm not actually sure who the Radiant Squad is. Another team actually popping up their team names for the uh, sides, but we are gonna have Infernity International. I know on the Dire Squad side. Then we're gonna be catching this game. And it looks like we missed the draft. So we'll get into it with the teams picked up. We'll go over the players and their heroes. Once we get off the draft screen, see how they're going to lean, not have to speculate about it too much. Which makes things a little bit easier, but we do get to miss out on the fun of seeing how the teams do draft. So, Inferni, they're going to be on the dire side. We have, we have me with my announcer that people complain about on. Alright, so we got LCF going to be playing in the Shadow Demon. Grazine going to be on the Juggernaut. Matrix Gaming on the Enchantress. Fanny I'm going to be on the Templar Assassin. And finally, Rio on the Dark Seer. Did I call one of them Matrix Gaming? Vic? They all say Matrix Gaming. Vic going to be playing the Enchantress. My bad. And in the meantime, Radiant side, we're going to have Magix on the Life Stealer. Joe, going to be playing the Nyx Assassin, not alone, on the Dragon Knight. Tia Heart Tequila, Tequila. Okay. Playing the Lena, and then their last player is going to be on the Weaver. That's going to be... Kisia. Alright, it looks like he had a little disconnect problem, so hopefully he gets back in pretty quickly here. And we can get underway. Uh, kind of... Pretty greedy lineup coming out from the Radiant side. It needs a lot of farm. And Dire Side looks like they're running Juggernaut as their main carry. Probably see Templar in the mid lane. Enchantress, obviously. Gonna end up jungling. See if uh, they're able to get some kills with the Shadow Demon and Juggernaut combo. Just disruption, then Juggernaut runs up. Tries to get the spin on them. They won't have a slow. So might have a little bit more trouble than normal. But we're gonna go here, and we'll see exactly how the Radiant side plan uh, landing. Looks like they need another minute, maybe. Good to go. <laughs> Say go after you unpause. Sure. Looks like the Red Dragon Knight in the mid lane. I don't think that's particularly surprising. He might not have the best time against the Templar Assassin. Looks like we got Tia and. Also, Joe hanging out maybe towards this upper rune spawn. I kind of expect them they're going to head towards the top lane with magics and then just leave Weaver. Down in this bottom lane by himself solo. We'll see how it ends up working out for them. Weaver should have a pretty decent time. As a ranged hero, it's probably just going to be up against the solo Darkseer. It doesn't look like that's how Inferno are planning on running it at the moment. It's probably not going to have too much trouble in that particular lane for farming. And uh, it'll kind of come down to how this Dragon Knight goes in the mid lane, I think. If Dragon Knight gets completely out CS, and Templar Assassin gets a ton of CS, I think that uh, maybe the Raid side going to be in a little bit of trouble in this game. Might have a little bit more trouble heading into that mid game with their pretty farm intensive lineup. Rio taking some damage in the bottom lane already, Weaver chasing after him. It looks like he's probably yeah, he's going to pick up Iron Shell at level 1. and. Now going to try and trade some auto attacks with Key. Attempting to steal the creep wave, and it looks like we were just going to be forced to let him do it. As he doesn't want to miss on an entire creep wave on the tower. So, one of the pluses Regeneration. of having the Darkseer in this lane is that he can just kind of creep skip, and there's not a ton that Weaver can do about it. He can try and lay down the harass, and he's got me uh, Rio at about half HP. Uh, Rio's getting a lot of farm and making Weaver's life kind of miserable at the moment. Meanwhile, again, mid lane. Kind of expected Templar Assassin to be taking the advantage here, and she is getting the benefit of a ton of denies at the moment. Not alone, just can't do a ton about it. That point already taken up in the side blades, of course. Helping the Templar Assassin get some harass in on the Dragonite while still last inning, and the first point in refraction. 
going to dodge that breathe fire as well. And a little bit of a fight going off in the top lane. It looks like Lena might be in a little trouble with that net from the Dark Troll Summoner, but nothing going to come from it. Magic's heading pretty far forward. It looks like they want to get the kill on the Troll. And Magic's, in fact, will get the last hit. Lena going to miss the Light Strike Array. And Grazine running in. There's the slow from Enchantress on Lena. But body blocking coming out from Magix, it looks like it's going to keep them pretty much safe. Magix does need to be somewhat worried about that. Another Light Striker ain't going to miss. Magix. Magix. You don't have Rage. What are you doing? And first blood goes to Juggernaut. He was body blocking like a champ. Then he ended up getting body blocked by these skeleton warriors. And they just weren't taken down in time. Ends up losing his life. That's why you get points in Rage early. And not that point in Feast right away. So at first blood, it does go the way of Infernity on the Dire side. Gonna be doing their best. See bottom lane, Rio continuing to get quite a bit of last hits, just sitting here cutting off this creep wave. Weaver doing about the same though, it looks like he is doing a pretty good job of last hitting under this tower. So not too much excitement going on down there, and again in the mid lane, TA just kinda getting all the farm she wants. Dragonite like doing decent in terms of last hits. He is being forced to just bottle grow. To keep his mana up, probably mostly relying on that breathe fire. Looks like Orb of Venom gonna be picked up by the life stealer. Um kinda surprised to see that, to be honest. Maybe they're thinking they'll be able to get a kill with just the little bit of additional slow, the tornado coming out from the wild wing. Harassing them back just a little bit, dealing some damage. But it's going to also allow this creep wave to just push in the tower a little bit faster. And Magic's doing a pretty good job of lasting under the tower as well. As I say, that he misses a couple. Knew I was talking about him. Looks Radiant like some pings coming out tower. from these it's supports. They're smoked up. They want to go for a gank in the mid lane. Do they have any reveal? They have one sentry ward on the Nyx. Pretty much all you need when you're going for a kill on this TA in the mid lane. Gonna swoop behind, and there's not enough mana for another refraction charge actually, so Fanny might be in some trouble here. Come the pings, and he's too far forward. There's a stun, and follow up stun. There's a sentry. And it looks like Fanny's gonna be going down. Oh, maybe not a haste rune! Wow. Good timing for a haste rune. Now, Lena might be in some trouble actually, and gonna go down to Vic. Being played by Enchantress. Hesitated maybe a little bit longer than they should have on dropping that haste rune. The Nyx just spent a lot of time. And then a regen rune found in the bottom lane for Templar Assassin. Pretty convenient. Gonna get completely back up to full. Probably would have been pretty close post uh, bottle charges, anyways. Did have a full bottle. Looks like Rio gonna be forced back by Key once again in the bottom lane. Top lane, Magic's taking quite a bit of damage from LCF. It's gonna be stunned from Light Strike Array as well as the slow from Overwinds. It looks like Shundin probably losing his life. Magic's does get that last hit, but now Grazine doing some damage down here as well. Just gonna be forced back, can't really get a kill because of it, and the support does end up going down. It's 2 1 now, the kill score in favor of Infernity. Only losing that support up in the top lane. Another set of sentry wards going to be picked up by the Nyx assassin here, as well as some regular wards. Getting close to that six minute mark, wards going to go down. Want to make sure they have that site. Don't want to give TA any free room to just roam around, set up some kills somewhere. If they get a big rotation from TA, it could be definitely devastating. Already does quite a bit of damage, does have the points in side traps at this point. So have to be worried about that roaming coming out from the Templar. Dragonite still trying his best to keep up with last hits, relying on Breathe Fire mostly for that. He's already put three points into it. And continue to just taking harass from the side blades. Gonna actually ult now. Kinda surprised to see that. I guess refraction charges get burned pretty effectively by the poison attack. Maybe that's what they're thinking here, but you can't really spam Dragonite all not the way you can refraction. And it still doesn't really stop TA from last hitting. The Thoras is going to be kind of minor in the grand scheme of things, and if he's sitting there just trying to auto-attack TA, he's probably getting 
spill damage at the very least from the side blades themselves. Bottom lane key starting to get further and further ahead of this Dark Seer. We can see that it's just not the best matchup for the Dark Seer down here. It's against Solo Weaver. It was pretty okay early, but now that the Weaver is getting some levels, he has more points. In the Shikuchi, picked up some Tranquil Bits as well. It looks like he might be going for an Orchid, actually, with the Double Sage's Mask. That's not a build we really see a ton of. I'm trying to think of what else he could go for it with it. Ring of Aquila with one, but... Not really sure why you would have the second one. It's not like you're going to pick up a Soul Ring. So maybe we're seeing an Orchid Weaver. Pretty unusual. Bottom tower Looks like a kill maybe attack. coming in the top lane. Magic's trying to do some damage to Grazine. He has his boots though. It looks like it's just going to be able to walk away fine. Actually, phase boots up on Lifestealer. Maybe just worried that there were supports there. But I think he might have been able to dive that. We've taken quite a bit of damage from the tower, however, so just being careful. Can continue getting his farm. He's forced the Juggernaut out of lane. And it's looking like the Radiant side doing pretty well here, even though they are down the kill. Rio going to get harassed back by Weaver once again. So I think a big focus here that's going to be coming out from the Inferni lineup is this mid. Templar Assassin, definitely their hero that's doing the best, and even now, Dragonite's really come close to catching up in terms of last hits, not alone. Doing a pretty good job in this lane. Oh, you're hot. Not sure why he just played Lena's voice all the way from the top lane. They're going to pop another smoke. Here comes the initiation on the life stealer. Stun gonna be off on LCF. It looks like he's gonna be the first one to lose his life. Magic still in pretty much full health. Juggernaut does have that ultimate. And going to pop it hits twice on Magic's right away, and he's gonna lose his life. A great Omni Slash coming off. Not that he can really do too much about it. That's another kill, and now Lena looks to be losing her life as well. Light Striker is gonna be there, but. Already a double kill, Grazine trying to run the opposite way, has that healing ward keeping him up for the moment, and now going to try and run out, not alone is chasing, no mana for the stun for a moment, but he's going to have it now, TA trap though, going to slow him up, and that will be the end of that chase, so it ends up being a 3 for 1 in favor Powers. of Inferno on the dire side. Radiance top tower is under attack. Looked like it was going to be tragedy for a moment, but they're able to pull it out in those Heals coming off for both the Enchantress and Juggernaut. Really working wonders there. Juggernaut able to kind of get a, about a quarter of his HP back while he was running away under that tower. And of course the Wisps from Enchantress keeping her alive while Rainside continuing to try to fight there. End up maybe staying a little bit too long for a little confident. Really wanted that kill, of course, on Shadow Demon, which they did get. But at what cost? But at what cost? Radiance Middle Tower is under Everyone trying to move around, it looks like. Four heroes up in the top lane for the Radiant, but we do have both Templar Assassin and Darkseer looking like they're going to make their way there as well. TA has been spotted by this ward, so they know she's here. Which means this Nyx needs to be pretty careful. Going to get slowed up. It doesn't look like there's going to be anyone else close enough to do too much. Ice Striker Rage is going to hit on the Satyr. Not going to really do a ton, but while this is going on, we have five heroes from the Dire up in the top lane. We have not alone farming in the mid lane. We have Key farming in the bottom lane. And Weaver starting to get quite a bit of farm. Has that first Oblivion staff up. St Dyer's kind of surprised to be seeing the Orchid pick up. Just not really sure who that's going to be against. If the Nyx was on the other team, maybe I'd be like, oh yeah, they're getting it for the Nyx, but Nyx is on their team. <laughs> so maybe the TA just don't want to deal with meld and refraction and all the side traps, kind of shenanigans that TA can throw out. Or even Juggernaut, maybe they're concerned about him trying to spin and get away, or even getting using Omni Slash right before he dies in a fight or something like that. Stolen. There are definitely heroes it's decent against, but definitely kind of an unusual first pick. Magic's going to spot out the Enchantress, and we're going to have the Disruption once again on the Life Stealer. It looks like he might be losing his life, so we're going to watch him see how it goes. Looks like he's fine for the moment, and it's going to be Lena who ends up losing her life. Stug comes off on the Creep. I think that was probably a mistake by Not Alone. Might have been able to save Lena there. Creep ended up 
dying under the tower. But another two kills going the way of Inferni on the dire side. Key. Gonna lay a little harass down on Rio. And dive in behind that tier 1 tower. Dyer's Looks like he's setting up a tower push and should attack. be able to just finish it off here momentarily. Unfortunately, it looks like the might lose attack. its life if he doesn't tank the tower up Radiant's a little bit. Structures are fortified. Dyer's structures are fortified. Glyph could have come out, doesn't look like anything's gonna come from it. Just buying a little bit of time maybe for this creep wave to get here. Dyer's but with this catapult continuing to have, there's enough creeps to just tank it up. Key, unfortunately, gonna get hit by that. And ends up giving Dyer's the tower last tower hit to the fallen. catapult and almost losing his own life. But the tower goes down, he makes sure it doesn't get denied. Give some much needed gold to his team. 8 to 2 is now the kill score in favor of the Dyer. And looks like we might be having a little bit more skirmishing going on in this top lane. She looks to be making her way to the bottom after picking Dyer's up an illusion room. Not actually sure why she's doing that. Maybe hoping Weaver will just uh, stay here, overextend a little bit. If she just melds somewhere at random, might get a kill. We're just pushing back towards the tower. Radiant's bottom this is also possible. Is Looks like she's actually probably going to be able to get it. It does get the last Radiant's hit. Bottom tower has fallen. Key going to uh, Trinkle Boots up once again. No fear whatsoever of this TA, I guess. It looks like Dark's here going to make his way to the middle lane. Going to just take the opportunity to farm a little bit, it looks like. Up against not alone. Also, not the best matchup. Blink Tanger picked up by Fanny now. Shouldn't be able to kill Weaver still. But uh, if Weaver is particularly aggressive here, can't get himself killed. Meld will do a lot of damage. It is maxed out, and those refraction charges are up as well. Oh, we have a gink going on in the mid lane though. Looks like no one taking too much damage yet, and Lena's still alive, just barely. Sitting on 9 HP, no big deal. Vic gonna get stunned up, taking some harassment tower as well, gonna end up losing his life. To the Weaver, blink in from TA though, doing a lot of damage. And it ends up being the death of Dragon Knight as a result. Chasing after Lena now. Sidetrap gonna go down, doesn't land on anything. Lena trying to juke. How long could she hide? In the meantime, Weaver does get a kill. Looks like he might actually chase after Rio as well. And then ends up going back with the time lapse. Getting slowed up. But not going to be able to get the kill on him. Pretty aggressive play there. Ends up being just a two for one trade in favor of the Radiant. But Dragonite buys back, and not sure if it was super necessary. Ends up just getting there in time to breathe fire on a creep wave. In the meantime, Grazine pushing towards his top lane. Joe. Can't port in without a creep wave into a juggernaut, sir. And that level 2 army slash does spell his death. And it looks like Grazine will get the last hit on the tower as well. In the meantime, fight going on the mid lane. Chantra's able to get a kill on Dragon Knight once again. Magix looks like he might be able to finish off Vic here, actually. Weaver getting the last hit. Fetty trying to do whatever he can. Dodges the Light Strike Array. Pretty low on HP though, needs to be careful. Radiance and such a word gets dropped by top. LCF actually. And Lita gonna get blown up by Templar. Templar level 12 with the Blink Dagger with the Max Meld. Just absolutely annihilates her and Weaver. Being aggressive once again isn't expecting the Sentry Ward I guess this time. Ends up paying for it with his life as well, so a double kill going the way. Of Fanny on the TA, 13-5 now that kill score in this tier 1 tower in the mid lane. Looks like it's going to be the casualty of the Radiant losing that fight. Darkseer gets that last hit, no big deal. So let's take a quick look at experience of gold. While everyone's sort of regrouping, we got gold, about 6k in favor of the Dire. And experience looking more like 7500. So a little bit of a lead accumulated there. It's only 16 minutes into the game. Still plenty of time for the rain to come back, and it does look like they have the much more late game oriented lineup. With heroes like Lysteo, like Weaver, and even Dragonite, who really got to scale a little bit better into the late game than heroes like Dragon or, uh, Juggernaut and Templar Assassin, but is TA going to start becoming kind of a beast? Here comes the Nyx. 
need to get that refraction up. He actually looks to be going on Rosha. Needs to be kind of careful there. If the refraction charge comes off, she can't lose her life to the Nyx. They're going for a kill and they're not going to be able to get it. Vic does get the heal off just before dying. Matrix, or uh, Fanny, destroying Lino once again. Not alone, the only one left alive. The Vacuum trying to pull him up to the cliff, but it's not going to matter. Fanny gets a double kill. There's Omni Slash is there as well. On the Weaver, once again, just trying to be pretty aggressive there, maybe help his teammates out, relying on Shikuchi to get away, and ends up just getting destroyed by a Sentry Ward. That's now a free Roshan. So Infernity really doing a good job of taking fights and then uh, taking something on the map as a result of their wins. We saw them take that tier 1 in the mid lane when they won that fight mid. And then now just winning a fight just outside the Roche pit and get a free Roshan as a result of it. Aegis is up on Templar Assassin. As well as 2500 gold. Looks like she might be going for Desolator. Has the money for it. Also possible, yep, BKB instead. I was about to say, maybe it's going to be BKB. She wants to play a little bit more cautiously. Or he does quite a bit of damage to these supports. Like the uh, Nyx and the Lina. Even the Weaver doesn't have too much health. If she can't be stunned up in these fights, she's going to be able to put on a lot of damage. So maybe just concerned about that now, let's see her go back for a damage item later. And at that point, maybe not even pick up a death slayer, maybe just go something else, like the uh, Crystalis. We'll see, has options. Looks like Key going to be hanging out down here. LCF, going to get the disruption off on him. And Key just going to try and run away. The Purge going to be there, remaining on key even after the time lapse, but time lapse just giving him enough space to get away. Meets up Juggernaut does go down the top lane. Do a little bit more of a successful game coming out of the Radiant side. And it looks like this tower in the top lane going to be the target as a result. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Trying to take the tier 1, not doing particularly well yet. It's starting to go down now post glyph. Should be down relatively quickly, but in the meantime, Dire Squad are going to try to push this tier 2 in the bottom lane. Haven't dealt any damage yet, and the tier 1 already goes down the top lane. So here comes the TP support. Fernie going to have to decide if they think they want to fight this. And it looks like the answer is no, they're going to back off. At least for the time being, Grazine's still down on the Juggernaut, respawning now. And we'll take a quick look at items, see if anyone else has picked things up. We knew the Orchid came out from Weaver pretty recently. We have the Armlet up on Lifestealer as well now. And Fernie looking like maybe they were doing a little bit of a fake back there. Might go in now. Comes LCF surged in. Magic's going to be the one taking trouble. He runs away from the creep wave, but Key saving him momentarily. Can Key get away? Looks like he might go down. Has to time lapse back. I don't think he needed to do that. It ends up getting killed as a result. It gets Magic's killed as well. Lena running in, trying to do whatever she can. Ends up just going down. Joe. Gonna get slowed up as well, not alone. Trying to stun the Centaur that's just been body blocking him, but the Omni Slash is gonna come out, and that's another kill. Chen just gets a full team wipe. I think Weaver could have gotten away there. Panicked a little bit, hit the panic Radiant's button, the reset button, the time lapse. But it pulled him back into the fight. That's exactly where he didn't want to be. And it pulled the life sealer to his death as well. So that tower gonna be bottom tower has fallen. basically taking is just a little more advantage for Infernity, but after taking a five for nil fight, they take a tier two, they still have the Aegis. Time to go for the tier three, they have the gem up on Templar as well, didn't notice. That's how they got the Weaver, not a Century Ward this time. Managed to take about a third, maybe two fifths of the health. Off that tier 3, the bottom lane looks like they're going to be happy to just back off with that. They have other tier 2 towers on the map they can pressure. They don't need to force an awkward team fight when they're low on mana. And possibly HP. Regen run going to be in the lower river. Fanny going to pick that up pretty easy. Just get full mana, no big deal. Convenient rune spawns. And it looks like Templar are going to try and gank in the mid lane. Maybe it needs to be a little careful. Oh, she kills not alone from full health. Hanging out, thinking about it. Not going to commit yet. No big deal, Fanny. No big deal. And it looks like the support's hanging out in the range. I'm going to farm it up here. 
Chantress just running around. Doesn't actually want to farm, just wants to move around. And they need to be somewhat careful. They are going to spot out the enemy supports now in this jungle. Joe going to walk into LCF. Joe really low at HP. Gets punched by that long melee range from Rio. Doesn't even pop the spike carapace in that. Maybe just thinking he was safe, but he wasn't safe. He was not safe. Grazine getting in a fight in the top lane. Key has that orchid, but gonna be forced to run away now. The time lapse coming after him. Might have to. Yeah, there's the ult on Lina. Grazine gonna try and get in a fight. Is Key gonna keep going for it? He is. There's one crit that comes out from Grazine. Oh, and the spin. Grazine able to get the double kill, and the tier two already down in the mid lane in the meantime. So losing a 2v1 gain, kind of the juggernaut up in the top lane, and now they're going to lose a tier 3 in the mid lane as well. Looks like the Roshan. Going to reclaim the Aegis in the next 30 seconds or so. Probably not going to see Fanny dropping anytime soon. Tower does go down. Middle tower has fallen. And the rain side just feel like they can't do anything about it. They're just watching them as they take towers. 25 to 7 now the kill score, and probably going to see an Inferno wrap this up in the near future. Pigs going out, hey, they're they're farming our jungle. But what are they gonna do about it? They can run in there and say, hey, we're gonna we're gonna chase you. Force you back. And it looks like that was enough to make a chance just want to back off, but they're kind of forcing a fight. In a kind of awkward situation outside their base. They're not really winning the fights on their towers at this point. If they force another fight, especially on their side of the map, they end up losing it. They're probably going to end up losing at least one set of racks, probably two with the first, that tier 3 already down in the mid lane. Another two minutes on Glyph. So they won't have that to rely on for this next push, if Inferno want to force it right now. But they don't have that Aegis anymore, so maybe feeling like they can back off a little bit, slow it up. At least 600 gold on Templar. Kind of surprised to see that. She buys something on the courier. Two mithril hammers. There we go. So it is going to be the desolator, and we'll have it Dyer's momentarily. Only about attack. 200 gold off now. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. We haven't really looked at Juggernaut's items too much because he hasn't really been the story of this game. Grazine, yeah, he's doing well, certainly, but. Just how he's playing doesn't even feel like it matters at this point. He gets that kill, basically, on Dragonite just sitting there, Ani slashing to death. Tier 3 already down in the bottom lane now. Joe going to get the stun off on 2, but even with some follow up from Lina, it's just not enough. Vic going to pop the slow, and now there's a the sprite. Try to go off the Lina ult, going to hit on Rio, but doesn't really do too much to Darkseer. Vic going to get the kill on Lina finally. You okay? And Vic maybe overextending here. The disruption gonna keep her alive for a moment, and then the surge gets her away. Can't even set up these kills on the Enchantress. That's pretty much diving way past them. Magic's infested in a creep that entire time. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So it looks like Inferni gonna be taking this. Start hitting these barracks. Take the second set of racks now. See any real reason they need to back off now, other than they just feel like playing pretty passive, want to play safe, not throw away an advantage, not alone getting chased now. Looks like he's gonna be able to get away. Magic's trying to deal whatever damage he can, but with the mech charge with the wisps, gonna be fine. And Lena is gonna go down to impetus once again. Slow and not alone, not gonna be enough. He's back in the fountain, and the chances may do damage, but not that much damage. Here you go, back to the barracks. We force them back once again. And they can't rotate back to that top lane and try and take the tier 3 there. Because they haven't actually taken the tier 2 yet. So, pink score off 29.7 on the kill score. Look at, let's see, 20k gold, 25k almost in experience. Huge lead for Infernity. Just kind of am in a pretty big advantage here at this point. Over the other side.
and a little bit surprised to see that the Raiders side haven't just decided to give it up at this point. There we go. Not a long cost hit. It's like if, I mean, you guys can sit here and wait it out, but you're not in a position where you're ever really coming back. Your team needs way more farm and has a significantly less farm. But pretty good to take it, so they will move on even deeper in these brackets. For the TT Esports Dota 2 Weekly number 12. Radiant's top tower and is we'll under hang attack. out here for a minute. The throne should be going down momentarily. Once again, my name's Kananis. Radiant's top tower has I'm bringing fallen. you the tournament this week and actually the last couple weeks as well. Let's get sponsored by Thermal Take Esports. Powered by Adroids and cast by me, Kananis. You can follow me at Kananis Dota. On Twitter, top or on Twitch.tv at Twitch.tv slash Kanazta, K-A-N-A-Z-T-A. -A -A. We'll be back momentarily while we wait for the next game to get going. Don't know if we're going to follow Infernity, see how they keep doing, if they're able to uh, make it deeper into this tournament towards the end, or if we're going to check out some other teams. You know, so I'll wait and see what the admins want to do. But thanks for coming, and feel free to stick around.